Hey and welcome, Miss Kira Speaks. I ask before we get started that you watch the videos till the end, subscribe and turn on your notifications. We're here for another episode of Insecure, season five, episode three, tighter pressure, okay? Now listen, listen guys, I'm so sweaty. We're out here in the sunlight, it's a little hot. You're gonna hear a little noise, just taking the nature around you because this, particular episode had me stressed and triggered. As a single mother, I was entirely triggered. So we're getting this beautiful sunlight and letting this energy flow and hoping that things will feel a little bit better as we get started. So rock with your girl. Um, the episode is the Lawrence episode. We see the last moment, moment in episode one where he and Issa broke it off or Issa broke it off with him. And he, I thought he was back at his new place, but he could have been in his old place and packed up because everything was still in boxes and plastic. And I assume what they did with Lawrence also is time jump because he wakes up and he's all settled in his new place. So he goes to work, he's all snazzy in his little shoes, little shoot, in his little suit and everything. Um, and everything is looking all good. Lawrence's life is looking up. So he's watching a pitch um, with his team and it's for a smart gear company. And after they leave, everybody passes except for Lawrence. He says that their sensor technology is advanced. Plus he's impressed with their analytics and they already have traction in the marketplace and low overhead. So he gets to go ahead from his boss, I guess, to pursue it. Now it's nighttime and we see him on a date. Um, and it doesn't seem to be going too well. They're making small talk and she doesn't seem interested at all. So things lighten up a bit when she asks him how he likes the city and he said it's cool, but he's still afraid to get on the trolleys. She, she asks him, you know, why? And he's like, it doesn't have doors. And basically he's afraid to fall out and roll down a hill. You're lucky you're cute because that's stupid, she says. Um, he says he'll take stupid and cute. And then he gets a text. He drops the F-bomb. Um, what happened? He's like, I guess my baby was just born. So she laughs. Oh my God, can you imagine? I don't know what you laughing at, honey. He was being dead ass. So he apologizes. He pays for dinner. He's got to go. Um, he hops on a plane and he makes it to the hospital. And this is where the fun begins. So the nurse tells us it's a boy. He has arrived sooner than expected, but everything is okay. Very little tearing, she mentions. Ma'am, Lawrence is not interested in that. He actually looked like he didn't know what she was talking about. So he walks into the room and all conversation stops and all eyes are on him. Condola is there and she's holding her baby and her mom is there who's paid, her mom Jackie, is the mom's name, is, play, is there who is played by Layla Rashawn and sister Kyra played by Kiki Palmer. They're both there. I'm probably gonna call, like in my notes, if I call Kyra, um, Kira, just understand that that's my name and that's how I spell my name, but it's not pronounced Kyra, it's pronounced Kira. Huge problem when I was growing up, but that's not what we're here for. So, um, <laughs> Condola's hold, holding the baby. I said that already, da, 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 da. And the sister says, oh, that's why the baby looks like that. And she kind of laughs. So mom tries to break up the um, tension and she introduces, introduces herself. So, you know, <clears throat> I'm a proceed because that's probably in my notes. Anyway, um, <laughs> Lawrence asks how's, how he's doing and condolences reveals that she has named the baby Elijah Mustafter. Mustafter, Mustafa. I'm not making any edits on this video. Elijah Mustafa and Elijah's after their grandfather. Mustafa, Lawrence says. Yes, that's what they said, Lawrence. That is a very strong name. So mom asks if he wants to hold the baby and Lawrence, you know, he seems nervous and he finally, finally, you know, sputters out that he'd love to. I ain't see him wash his hands though but the little baby was too cute and Lawrence is like he got some big ears Condola's like yeah that's what I thought so we know that Lawrence moved so he's staying at Chad's place and he's talking cash money ish and then she had the nerve to act like she's doing me a favor by giving the baby my last name triggered triggered all the way triggered she is doing you a favor sir last name are for husbands trust me lesson learned anywho Chad is there you know, he's got the comedy, but he's also got the BS. So Walker's a good last name. Who don't want their baby to walk? He says, you know, they talked about baby names, but they never, but never any, but never anything official. So it's leading us to believe that there has been little to no communication between these two during the duration of the pregnancy. 
Lawrence did say he didn't want to have a baby and she did say she didn't want to have a baby with her ex when she was married and they got divorced and then here we are so um he tells him the baby's name is Elijah Mustafa the Lion King Chad asked no that's my shit I don't really f with the remake though agreed Be Beyonce in a movie I want to see Beyonce fair enough Chad I agree with that too um Lawrence is tight what was Lawrence tight about? Lawrence is tight that he found out through text message his son was born and says the family's already acting like he's a deadbeat. Chad says deadbeat? He says how? The baby fresh out the poom poom. Chad is a mess, y'all. So Lawrence says that this is just not what he planned for his first kid. Chad, Chad tells him bo bo box back. Chad, why are you putting the battery in this man's back? Lawrence is still talking ish about not being left out. To me, it seems that he did not care anything about being a dad until the baby was born, but that's just an observation. So Lawrence and Condola, they're at the baby's doctor's appointment. I don't know if it was the first baby's doctor appointment. It was probably the second, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's the first. So Elijah is weighing in at 6.1 pounds and 22 inches long. Not too bad for a baby that's born early. In my opinion, I've had a baby that was born early. Um, condolences is a little upset that the baby lost weight. She's been feeding him on schedule. Lawrence also chimes in and asks if everything's okay. And the doctor tells him there's nothing to worry about. Most babies lose weight in their first week. They do. His vitals are strong and he should be back to his fighting weight in about a week or so. So he asks her how best breastfeed is going, the doctor that is. And she says it could be better, but she's been working with the LC, lactation consultant. Oh, that's great, the doc says. So wait, there's a milk problem? What's up with the milk? My milk is fine, Lawrence. Then he starts asking the doctor question. And for some reason, y'all, for some reason, y'all can only see Condola as, sorry, I'm looking at my notes. My whole, what I was saying was, for some reason, y'all can only see how Condola is behaving as a new mom with her first child, but y'all think Lawrence's um, responses are totally appropriate. He was uh, overdoing it, in my opinion, at this doctor's appointment too. But I mean, you don't have side conversations with the mom and you wanna get in the doctor's office and now all of a sudden, you know, it's whatever. So, like I said, I'm gonna try to get through this whole, this whole episode had me triggered. Y'all know I talk fast. I'm, you know, let me just get, let's keep moving on. So, um, with them bickering, even the doctor says, first one, and he says, it gets better, but what's important is the baby is happy, healthy, and adorable, because there's been some very ugly babies come through. He was too funny. He really lightened the mood for me a little bit because, child. And I think Issa said the doctor was either a writer or director on the show, not really sure. But Lawrence wants to change the doctor's appointment so he can come down, but Condola tells him that that's when the doctor's available. Child, make, woo. Mamas know, getting them doctor's appointments for them babies be hard sometimes. So he asked about the baptism. His mom keeps asking about it. And she says there's a nice church near her where she sometimes goes when her parents are in town that she's gonna just do it there. You already planned it? He asks sounding uh, like he's disappointed. And then he asks her, is this how it's gonna be? You just making the schedule, he says. You mean like I've been doing, she said exactly condola exactly y'all gonna mess around and make me like condola and y'all know i really don't well at least empathize with her because this uh, this episode sent me i'm his father i feel like i should have some say what happened to just keep me posted she said so he wants to come down every week to see him does that work for your schedule and i said to myself we'll see how this goes she asked if she's sure she asked if he's sure and he's like you know he's not gonna not be there she's like okay so we'll figure it out so now we see Lawrence he's at home and he's putting together a crib and the next thing we know we hear a plane and then we see some questionable food it's the baby's baptism Psalm 127 verse 3 says children are a gift from the Lord are they in Kanalu's house I thought she said it was a church near her house I guess so um Lawrence's uncle Ronnie comes over and he says that this is what I love to see a black father being here for his son showing up doing it Lawrence says that means a lot um uncle Ronnie shakes his hand and slides him a five well I guess you can start Elijah's piggy bank um and Kyra is back there just a rolling her eyes 
Lawrence goes to check on his parents and they say, they call that a baptism? That was just a couple of droplets. I guess the baby's forehead is saved, the mama says. And I holler, don't ask, just black mamas. I laugh. So, but what about the rest of them? She says, Lauren explains that condolences had already made plans. And mama says, so you gave up the baby's soul? And so she says, so you just gave up on the baby's soul? And she says she's going to take him to Pastor Clark for a full dip. So Lawrence goes to check on baby Elijah. And Condola says, you know, he could use a little nap. Lawrence like, yeah, a nap sounds good right about now. And Kyrus sarcastically says, I'm sure you're so tired. So Uncle Ronnie walks up talking about Lawrence eating quiches and lactose intolerance. Um, and Lawrence changes the topic and says, how about they all to get, get together for the holidays? Elijah could spend some time with her family and then with his side. Um, he says he could take them for a week. He'll be old enough by then. A week, Condola says. That's like a year. Nah, it's actually a week, Lawrence responds. <sighs> he understands not about being a new mother and her child and that whole separation thing, especially when they're very, very new. Um, she's like, you know, we can talk about it when it gets closer. Um, and I guess this is as good a time as any to bring it up because I know I didn't put it in, in my notes. But I mean, I guess in Lawrence's defense, when she first had the baby, she could have allowed him to stay there and bond with the baby. But I guess she's trying to create that separation since they're no longer a couple. Just wanted to add that in a little quickly because y'all are going to say I'm tough on Lawrence in this review. So Lawrence is back in San Francisco and he's talking about office space with his crew on the phone um, and the phone dings to remind him he has a flight to LA. He looks at his suitcase and then he checks Condola. Sorry, I can't make it down. Work's been crazy. And this is what I meant by we'll see how this goes when he said he'd be there every week. It was just a little too optimistic with work. He should have gone for every other week or hell start with once a month. So Kyra comes in and asks if she's okay and that she breaks it to her that Lawrence isn't coming. Ashy Larry strikes again, she says. Um, he ruined their massage day and Condola tells her, he says he has to work even, you know, and she, Lawrence said he had to work even though she was really looking forward to the whole massage. And Kyra says, the way Lawrence can just pop in and out every couple hours and play peek peekaboo and then split, he ain't nothing but an uncle. So Kyra says, she's better than her. She'd go off. So Condola says, it's okay. I'll just have to reschedule 18 years from now. So Kyra agrees to watch Elijah while um, Condola goes to get a massage. So Lawrence finally gets his dog on crib together that the baby will probably never sleep in. And he gets a text from Condola asking if they if he saw Derek's invite for Simone's first birthday. Um, he's like, yeah, what's up? She said, should we go together? You mean with Ja Cha at first? I was like, who is Ja? Forgetting that he calls Elijah Ja and Kyra calls him Eli just to keep me on my toes. So honestly, I think that he was thinking about Issa. Condola says, yeah. And then he says, he's down. So we're at Simone's first birthday party and Kelly is in her little tux looking all sharp. She walks over and Lawrence, to Lawrence and Condola and she's like, that baby is is a full fate. That is a full fate, a full baby with both of your faces. You know, welcome to the celebration of Simone. So Derek and Tiff join and they have little Simone and little Simone has a matching tux to her godmom Kelly. So Derek says her obsession with my child is unsettling, but you know, free babysitting. That's right, Derek. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Everyone needs a good godmom. Oh, y'all got Peppa Pig, he says. Uh, Lawrence and Kelly corrects, no, no, Pepper Pig. Hard R, copyright issues. So it's her cousin Tyrell. She tells him to get off his phone. Tiff takes Condola to put up her things and Lawrence asks Kelly if everything is good. She's good. She, you know, you might've heard I died nine months ago. Lawrence is like, what? And Derek's like, um, she didn't. And, and Kelly's like, she's back like Daft Punk. Better, faster, stronger. So Derek points out that she quit drinking. How's everybody else? Lawrence asked, and Kelly responded like a every like every true friend should. Everyone I associate with is thriving in abundance, limitless. I know that's right, Kelly girl. Now where is Molly and Issa? I thought we'd get an awkward moment from Issa, or I even take Molly and no Issa because you know maybe she got a heads up and decided not to come but nobody asked me and they don't explain it to us. So Lauren says, you know, that's great to hear. And Kelly gathers the folks around. She says she will not be partaking, but all by all means, grab an adult boy's own and join her in a toast. Child, Kelly says she don't even like kids. Their small features and stilted movements remind her of tiny demons. 
Derek and T Tiff's faces were like, what? So, but not Simone, she continues. Lawrence is over there, he's cracking up. She means so much to Kelly and will be a force when she grows up. She is proud to be her godmother. Happy birthday, Simone, an angel amongst demons. I mean, I, I, I didn't expect anything else from Kelly. So, Condola sees the baby is hungry, but Lawrence insists he's got him. So, someone tells her that Pepper Pig might be roasting. This fool is in the kiddie pool smoking. Talking about, what up, cousin? Come smoke with me. Kelly's like, I'm already high. So, Lawrence comes back with Elijah with food on his face. And Condola asks him, like, what's that? He's like, I gave him something off the kids' table, which was an assortment of mushes. He loved it. Um, but condolences reminds him reminds him that they hadn't introduced silent phones yet. Well, the doctor said we could do it anytime after four months. So she decided to wait is what she tells him. There's a new way. There's there's a way to introduce new foods. What if he was allergic? It's that deep, Lauren says. I'm trying my best to not be biased here, but it felt like Lawrence just wanted to be argumentative because he wanted to make a decision, a decision without her, like it was a competition. And again, she is giving me those new mom vibes, especially when it comes to the new foods thing. We'll be real reluctant. You don't want the kid to be allergic, like she said, real reluctant to try those new foods. So she says um, he that he could have checked, he should have checked in with her. He says she's being dramatic. Condola does not find it funny. She asks for the baby and he tells her to calm down. Derek looks. Other people are looking because it's escalating and they're getting loud. They knock over stuff on the gift table because their voices are slightly raised. Like I said, Derek comes over and asks Lawrence to help him move some boxes. He gives the baby to Condola and goes with Derek, but there are no boxes. Lawrence says he's tired of her BS. He calls her petty and controlling. You so, and so you got to act out, Derek asked him. I promise you this is not how you want to do things. He's like, it's all it's all too negative and Elijah can feel that energy. He says that they need to learn to communicate. There, he's correct about that. Then he brings up that brings up him and Tiff's situation to which Lawrence just reminds him that y'all are married. Very true. The situations are not the same. So they talk a little more and Derek says he hears him. But the last thing that he wants to do is be adding stress to the situation. Um... And he's not wrong about that either. Even if Condola had handled the situation wrong, two wrongs do not make a right. Someone has to defuse the situation until cooler heads can prevail. But none of these men, honey, they don't seem to get that. Anywho, um, so now we are getting a split screen. Lawrence is back in San Francisco and Condola is at home. Child, did my child get off the bus? Who? um... Condola is at home um and I'm gonna say this right now this, this whole scene took me out had me all in my feelings no one understands the, sh the struggle of a single mother but a single mother and trust me I understand it all too well so Condola lays Elijah down and she's tired Lawrence comes in he puts his work bag down he's also tired they both crash on their sofas um and that's where the similarities end. They both wake up. Lawrence goes to work. He celebrates a new warehouse space, complete with champagne, which... Complete with champagne. They're celebrating. Condola and Kyra are trying to eat. Eliza is fu Elijah is fussy and crying. Lawrence has met some woman. They're kissing and Condola is falling asleep on the toilet. Lawrence and the woman are having sex and poor Condola wakes up on the toilet. The next morning she's cleaning bottles. He's checking his phone. He texts her. Um, they're still trying to work out the overnight. It looks like they decided to do an overnight in LA first and he asked her if she's still cool with him taking Elijah overnight. She says sure, but I could tell that she wasn't. So when Lawrence gets there, Elijah is fussy. He holds him a minute and asks, is, is his bag packed? She says yes, but she asks about the car seat. He assures her that he got the one she told him to. It's installed in the rental and they're good to go. So she wants to take Elijah to calm him down. And Lawrence complains he only had him for two seconds. But he hands him over anyway. So Condola says that she doesn't think it's a good idea. Him staying overnight in a new strange place. What are you talking about? We talked about this. It's walking distance. She says she's just not comfortable with him going with him when he's like this. Lawrence is growing irritated. Um, Why are you acting like I can't handle this? What's wrong with you? I don't trust you, he says. And for all of y'all who can't understand that, I guess. But they weren't together that long. You see, that was the first time the mother had even met 
doggone man. Um, and besides, like you can't understand even being with somebody for a lifetime and then losing trust in him. Maybe she don't trust him. I'm a pro C because like I said, uh, anyway, Lawrence is upset and again, he decides to match her energy instead of diffusing the situation like he and Derek discuss. Are you effing serious? Stop acting like I'm an effing stranger. I'm his father. You you are barely there, she reminds him. Um, and you never check in. You don't even give me more than three hours notice when you're not coming. I have a job, he responds. I check in when I can. And I wish some of y'all had listened more clearly to the conversation and her concerns and frustrations. But what if he needed something, she says. She had to call Tiffany to take her and Elijah to, to urgent care. What the hell? Why didn't you tell me? What were you going to do, she asked. Not come on a Tuesday, I think is what she said. So child, the conversation goes on and on and on. It escalates and I wanted to get everything they were saying down because it all felt important, but I was so triggered by the conversation. He says he's doing his best. It's hard for him to. While she points out that he's living his best life complete with, with free time and a full night's sleep. So he tells her to shut up and he's like, shut up and says that, you know, she never gave him a chance. She says she gave him a chance and he moved away. He points out that he already had the job before he blew up it before she blew up his life. It is the complete absolute audacity for me. So I'm you're not an effing victim. She tells him he says she made this decision without him. And now she's trying to use the trying to keep the child from him. She says, half in and half out isn't working for me, nor is it great for a child if, you know, you're not given that consistency. So she says, Elijah isn't going with him. He ends with um, that he's just going to do whatever it takes to get his son with or without her. Get the F out of my house, she says. So again, it's the audacity for me. Now you want to bring the courts into it. And I was really shaking my dog on head. Um, and I think people are also... Um, y'all was missing something and I, Lord, y'all probably going to tear me up in the comments, but I'm going to say it anyway. And I feel like, you know, I feel like Condola had made peace with Lawrence not being around. And then after the baby was born, he decided that he wanted to be there. And I feel like she gave him that room to do just that and in a lot of ways he fumbled the ball by being overly ambitious and wanting to power struggle with her but i'm gonna stop there because like i said y'all gonna tear me up in the comment sections regardless lawrence is back on the on the plane he's headed home it's bad turbulence he looks concerned we hear a baby crying and as the plane settled down it looked like Lawrence himself was gonna cry. So I guess that gave him a moment of clarity. He gets home, he calls Condola and he apologizes. Thank you, Lawrence, because this isn't like you. He admits this isn't working. She agrees it's not. He asks, you know, what do they do? And the episode ends. Um, overall, it was a good episode because it really did get me in my feelings. And I want to say again, that although, you know, I understood Condola's side better, she's not 100% right about everything either like please hear me out on that because like I said oh, this video is too long too long just hear me out on that like I, I I get that he just let me wrap it up so I think that it's a fairly accurate depiction of what it looks like sometimes to co-parent with someone else I hope do hope that they work it out and that we get an update before the season ends friends listen to me and let this be a lesson be careful who you lay down with and make babies Amen. So what do you guys think that the next episode's going to bring us? Let me know in the comments. Um, I hope that you're going to come back next week and join me for episode four, which seems like it's going to be a little lighter. Yay! Um, if you made it this far, put a little baby emoji in the comments. Um, while you're here, check out some of my, um, some of my other videos. Thank you. Thank you. And before you go, subscribe, like, share. I appreciate you. Peace.